Ever wondered how games like PUBG scales horizontally? We learned that designing a game like PUBG would require us to save the state in the application server itself. We also saw that this state is very short lived. To understand why, let us see what information we are storing about the game. Every game will have players and each player will have to store their location on the map, their health, weapons and the team information that they are playing in. We need to store this information only till the match is live. Once the match has ended, we can destroy this particular information because it does not make sense. If we store this information in a database, we'll end up wasting a lot of time. Why? Because we'll have to query the database every time a person requests for the match state. And this is an IO call, network IO call, which will waste a lot of time. Hence, it is critical to store this information in the application server itself. Now, in order for a match to work seamlessly, all players of a particular match must be routed to the same application server. Else, they won't be able to find the relevant data for that particular match. To achieve this, what we can do is, we can assign a match ID and ask our client to send this match ID whenever they are making a request. They can send it as a path param, they can send it as a header, they can also send it as a query param. The thing to note here is that the load balancer must ensure routing the traffic based on this match ID. In simple words, if the first request for let's say match ID 2 goes to server 1, all the subsequent requests of same match ID must be routed to server 1 only. Which algorithm can we use to distribute this traffic? Well, in this video, we are going to discuss one such approach. We are also going to look at its pitfall and build intuition for the upcoming video on consistent hashing. I am Mohit Yadav and I teach in Scalar Academy. I have been fortunate enough to work on scale at Hotstar and Nutanix where I build systems which has massive read and write volumes. One of the reasons behind doing this system design primer series is to impart the knowledge that I have gained over the past one decade and help budding software engineers get better at architecting systems. Your support goes a long way in prioritizing quality content on system design. Hence, please like, comment and share this video with your friends. Also, we have a lot of new videos on system design. Hence, it is important for you to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell icon to get notified about our new upcoming videos. Now coming back to the topic. Remember, our goal was to distribute the load in such a way that all the requests with same match ID must be routed to the same server. Match ID 2, server 1, all subsequent requests of match ID 2 going to server 1. The second point was that the load should be uniformly distributed. Meaning if I have n servers, load on each server must be equal to or must be nearly equal to 1 by n. And finally, I should be able to add or remove instances from the cluster. Why? Because that is the essence of horizontal scaling. I don't want to build an infra where I have constant number of machines. My load on the system can increase or decrease. Depending upon that, the number of servers in my cluster can increase or decrease. The first strategy, if I have to think about the approach, the first strategy that comes to my mind is that I have a match ID and if I have to route traffic to each of the servers evenly, the basic strategy that comes to my mind is that I can simply take a mod of match ID with the number of servers, which is n. This number will signify which server will process my request. Let's take a few match IDs to see how exactly this is going to happen if we have three servers running. Let's say the match ID is 11, 11 mod 3 is 2, 42, 42 mod 3 is 0. So it will be routed to the 0th server. 34 mod 3 is 1. So it will be routed to first server. 
Similarly, 53 mod 3 is 1, 63 mod 3 is 0, which will be routed to 1 and 0 at server respectively. We see that the above approach will satisfy my first two goals. Let's dig a little deeper to find out what will happen if we add one more server. Now, my number of servers or n becomes 4. So, let's consider all the examples, all the match IDs that I took in the previous case where n was equal to 3. So, now since n is equal to 4, 11 mode 4 will become 3, 42 mode 4 will become 2, 34 mod 4 will again be 2, 53 mod 4 is 1 and 63 mod 4 is 3. Now let's consider the other case where we are removing one instance from the cluster. 11 mod 2, 1, 42 mod 2, 0, 34 mod 2, again 0 and 53 mod 2 is 1, 63 mod 2 is again 1. Now what is happening here? Let's consider the first case if the match ID is equal to 11 which was getting routed to server 2 when we had 3 servers will now be routed to server 3 when we add a new instance. Unless we transfer the data which is already residing in server 2 to server 3, our users will not be able to get the match information. And as we can clearly see from the examples that we took above, whenever there is a change in the number of servers, a majority portion of the keys will be distributed to the new servers. And this by no means is an ideal behavior. We need a way to minimize the need of data transfer whenever we decide to add or remove instances. Now before winding up, I would like to give you a home assignment. That's a maths puzzle. The puzzle goes like this. Consider initially there are M servers in the cluster and you can add or remove servers from the clusters. Let's say you do some add or remove operation and the final number now becomes n. This n can be greater than n, meaning that I have added new servers in the cluster or it can be less than m, which means that I have removed few servers from my cluster. What you have to do is you have to write an equation using which you can find out the amount of data that will be moved. Write your answers in the comment section and we'll see who gets it right. I hope you all get an idea about basic approach for load balancing in stateful systems. We will look at a better approach which is consistent hashing in the upcoming video. If you like the video, please like, comment and share this video as much as you can. Share it with your friends, family, whoever you think needs to get better in architecting. And at the end, there are upcoming videos on system design. So please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified about our new upcoming videos. Thank you.